So in the recent months, there's something that's been capturing my attention, and that is AI illustration, like DALI and Midjourney. Those two seem to be the biggest player right now, and we'll be focusing on those two. This is definitely a bit of an old news at this point, but there are a lot of things I wanted to talk about. For example, does this affect how we're gonna practice architecture in the future? And I will also walk you guys through how to use these tools to your workflow. And then at the end of the video, we'll also talk about which one is better. So these tools utilize artificial intelligence and text to image based technology to generate images based on prompts entered by the users. And it's insane how fast these technologies evolved. I remember back in like 2017, they were, I was amazed by how machines were able to tell dogs and cats apart, but now they're just able to generate whatever you throw at them from scratch. And these images are completely original. So um, I'm curious to see where this technology will be just a few years down the road. And on top of that, I'm curious to see what you guys will be creating. So we're hosting this architectural competition for AI illustration. So send us the images generated by AI tools for a chance to win $1,500. Even if you are not particularly interested in entering or interested in AI illustration, maybe tell your friends about it and maybe they might be interested. So that being said, let's dive right into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what this means to the architectural industry. I know whenever we talk about AI, there's a bit of like doom and gloom theories out there, but time after time, we're finding that architects are extremely hard to be replaced. And to many degrees, I think it's still true. Even though these AI tools are extremely good at creating realistic images and um, kind of help you out in the process, they're still not enough to even replace a small part of the architectural process. And I think that is because the way we think about AI maybe is a fundamentally different. Maybe we shouldn't think of them as like a potential threat that's going to take away the enemy, but maybe we should consider them as tools, sort of like AutoCAD and Rhino. They're just here to help you out with the process. And in this case, for AI, I kind of find them to be a really great design partner. Sometimes when I feel like I'm in a writer's block, I can give them a prompt about what I'm trying to design, and then they'll spit back the variations of the prompts that I've given them. And sometimes they give me ideas that I totally would not have imagined and that kind of keeps me going. So that being said, why don't we get into one of them and try it out? So we'll first go over Midjourney and then let's go over to Dali afterwards. So to start using Midjourney, you can go over to midjourney.com and this used to be in beta and only yet to sign up to be on a wait list for a really long time, but they have just opened everything up so you should be able to start using it right away. So click on join beta and use Discord to sign in. And now once you're in, they will probably give you a quick instructions on how to use these things. What you can do is go over to the newbie channel that you're assigned to and type the following. Let's type in slash imagine and any kind of prompt that you are interested in seeing. So one of the projects that we've been working on recently is called the Musk Residence, kind of like a residence inspired by Elon Musk. So let's say I want to get some inspirations of what this could look like, right? So let's say, let's do like Tesla. What's important about Midjourney is that the more descriptive your prompt, the better it is usually. And another cool tip is that they've recently released a V4 rendering engine to, so if you use this tag at the end, you'll generally get more realistic and consistent result. So let's try this out. Now, once you hit enter, Midjourney bot will take a few minutes to generate these images according to the prompt that you have given it. So let's sit around and, and what's really cool about Midjourney is that you can kind of see what other people are creating as well. So yeah, this is pretty amazing. And the image really matches the prompt that you've given it. Return of Jesus Christ descending from heaven according to the Bible, photorealistic 8K. And Man, that looks holy. So you can, if you scroll up a little bit, you can actually see the image being generated. And this is looking amazing. And look at that. Oh my God, these are just, this is probably the kind of house that Elon would design or this will be like a showroom for like their new car or something like that. I can totally see it. And it's stunning how realistic these images are. Like they got the angles perfectly. I can't even begin to talk about what to <laughs> talk about these technologies. Like they understood what Tesla and SpaceX meant. They're able to pick up that visual language and apply it into architecture, which is a to totally new concept that has never been done before. So if you want to further develop these images, you have two options. You can either upscale them to a bigger resolution 
or create additional variations of one of these particular images. So let's say you're really interested in one of these designs, but you feel like you want to explore further potentials out of this one. So let's say, which, I'm not sure which one you guys are most interested in, but I think this top right corner is quite intriguing for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit V2, which corresponds to the top right image, and see what variations um, Midjourney gives us. So let me just make sure the prompt has gone in. Okay, so as you can see, Midjourney bot is doing the work. Okay, let's give it a few seconds. And as you can see, since this is a variation that's based on one of those images, Midjourney tries to keep the image as consistent as possible. So as you can see, the general shape and the composition of the image is the same, but the minor details have been tweaked. So as you can see, the way the roof terminates over here is a little bit different in every image. And this garage entrance is also very different. So let's say you're satisfied with one of these images and you want to upscale it into a more printable or like high resolution scale. So what you can do is click on the U, um, the upscale button that corresponds to your image. So let's say I want to save the top right image again, and that would be U2. So if I hit it and give it a few minutes, Midjourney will go ahead and create a high resolution version of it. You can begin to imagine how powerful this can be. You have a concept, maybe you're given a prompt from your professor or your client, and sometimes you will feel writer's block, right? And you can just type in the requirements into Midjourney, and it'll give you like infinite number of inspirational um, images. So I'm not sure where my prompt is. Oh, okay, it's work in progress, 60% in. And look at that, oh my god. Yeah, that looks beautiful. It's sort of interesting that they have some text at the bottom, but I guess this is because a lot of the images that they're trained with had some um, text in the image. But I'm quite satisfied with this image. So this doesn't have to be the end all for your architectural design process. Maybe this is just a starting off point. You can take this image and start to model this in Rhino or SketchUp or your desired 3D design software and go from there. So that's really cool. Now let's check out DALI now. So DALI is another text-to-image based visualization tool, and you can use it by going into openai.com slash DALI2. I'll have the link in the description so you can access them from there. And simply, you just have to sign up using any of these account options. And for me, I'm going to use Google account, continue with Google. And, and then right away, you're able to enter the prompt to get started. So just for comparison, just to be a fair comparison, maybe I'll go ahead and copy the prompt from Midjourney and try it out here as well. So I'll say Tesla style, architectural home, SpaceX, futuristic design, exterior view. Okay, hit generate and let's see what it gives us. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. So that was certainly fast, but the kind of result is not as exciting as the Midjourneys, honestly. Um, some of these look... So there are some attempts to make the house look futuristic, but I'm afraid they were sort of unable to fuse the iconic design style with architecture properly. I think this one does a pretty good job, but this one, yeah, okay. And then this one is just a garage with a nice roof. Okay, this one is a little bit cool. Um, it's got a futuristic car in the foreground and the background looks pretty decent as well, I guess. Okay, so, but, okay, let's keep going with this. Maybe this is not quite done yet. Maybe we have to continue exploring, right? So I'm gonna create additional variations of this first image. I think this is most successful one so far, considering the shape of the window and all that. So let's hit variations and see what it gives us. Okay, and awesome, like, and this is pretty similar to Midjourney in a way that it generates additional variations based on the first image. So the angle and the shape of the house is somewhat consistent, but they give you additional variations of it. And honestly, like, the design itself is not quite my taste, but this might be what you're looking for. And all these little shapes can be inspirational in your design process. But what's cool about DALI is that this is not the end of the story. What you can do is use the in-painting tool to remove or add any kind of detail. So let's say, I think I'm still a big fan of the first image. So I'll go ahead and click on this one. And let's say, edit this one so that we can add um, a car in the foreground. So let's say, let's paint this in over here. So we'll draw some blank space over here like that. 
and then give it a prompt saying Tesla uh, Model Y entering the garage. Okay, I'm not sure if that's actually a garage door, but let's see what this gives us. Okay, wow, okay. So a lot of these attempts weren't very successful, but there is a single image that looks quite decent actually, and somewhat close to what I was imagining. I feel like the overall quality of the images aren't as great as the mid-journey, but Dali has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. Let's say, for example, I want to see more of these images, right? Like this was cropped just outside of what I want to see. And that's when you can use background extension tool. Okay, so in order to do so, all you have to do is click on edit image and click on add generation frame. So I will click this area over here and then just extend the image, I guess. So futuristic Tesla style, oops. Dial house, extend um, driveway, suburban to suburban area. Okay, let's see what that gives us. This seems to be working quite well. And what's cool about these background extension tool also is that they give you four variations. So simply by clicking on these little arrows, I can iterate between different possibilities. So I think what I like about this is, I think my favorite one is this one maybe. I like the way this, this line terminates at an angle. And I actually want to see a little bit more of this one. But let's, I'll accept this change. And maybe I'll try one more time on the other side as well. And boom, look at that. That looks pretty cool as well. And I'll continue to iterate cycle through these. Hmm. Okay, I wouldn't say a lot of them are usable. But some of them are pretty good. I'll say this one is pretty successful, so I'll accept this one. And I'll go ahead and save this image. Now, I just got a new idea. And what if we kind of combine the best of both worlds? So let's say, for example, I like the base image that Midjourney creates, but I also appreciate the background extension tool given by the DALI. So what I would do is I'll download the image generated from Midjourney, then upload it. Okay, I don't have to crop anything, so I'll skip cropping. And I'll create and I'll add the generation area like before and try generating additional area. So I'll say Okay, let's see what that gives us. Goodness, <laughs> it's, I, I have no idea what this means, but they added some text in there. These pixelated animals are quite interesting as well. But as you can see, the landscape is continuous. I think that's pretty good. And I think all I really have to do is now take, take the um, eraser tool and just like replace this image or replace that text over here. So I'll select that area and just do continuous sky. Maybe that's all we need. Okay, maybe it's better to take this to Photoshop at this point. It's kind of crazy how AI interprets your text. Okay, I think this is the best one. So I'll keep it at that. Anyways, that was an interesting experiment. And I think it sort of worked, maybe not. And it seems like the AI still has a bit more way to go in understanding what our human text is telling them. Okay, that being said, let's give it a quick comparison to see which one is better. So what I like about Midjourney is that their images are looking amazing. They're cinematic, dramatic, and exactly the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. And their result is extremely consistent. And yeah, I'm really happy with the re final result of the images. One of the things I like the most about Midjourney is that they have this community aspect to it. So for example, there's this highlight of the day that comes up every day. And just look at this one. This is just hilarious. Sister fight the movie. So someone just made this sequence of images that kind of narrates this scene where like there's a bunch of nuns in some nunnery and then these mafia guys come in. But then the... Yeah, it looks like they're gonna like, you know, I don't know, destroy some things, threaten them. But as it turns out, these nuns are super fierce. They take out their, you know, guns and like start shooting at them. <laughs> oh man, this is hilarious. Oh man, looks like they've been saved. So yeah, like you, you get to see what other people are creating on this platform. And it's honestly quite mind blowing. Maybe it, this is possible with DALI as well, but since I there's just no community aspect to it. I just don't know if it's possible or not. So this gives Midjourney a bit more edge. 
for me. So despite all the good things that are happening on mid journey, I think there are some downsides to it. So for example, I kind of dislike the way that you have to download and um, sign up with Discord. So for someone who is not familiar with Discord, this interaction might be a little bit odd. And the other thing is that there are so many other people creating their own images. So sometimes I get a little distracted. Sometimes I lose where my prompt is. And yeah, there's all that kind of jazz. But on the other side, um, Delhi provides their interface on the web. So you are able to sign up and enter your prompt directly into the web. Other pros about Delhi is that they provide you with a kit of tools where you can use inpainting, background extension, and stuff like that. On the other hand, it kind of felt like Delhi was having a harder time understanding what my prompts were asking for. And maybe they were a little bit out of fashion. Maybe I could be doing something wrong. So let me know if you guys think that is the case, then let me know how I can improve it. Okay, the last but not the least, there's pricing. So every image generation usually costs a credit for both platforms, but the pricing is a little bit different. So for example, you have to pay $15 for 115 credits, and these credits will stick around with you forever. And you can buy any units in multiples of that amount. On the other hand, Midjourney requires you to subscribe into their subscription plan, which costs you about $10 USD for the basic membership, which gives you 200 images per month. Now, of course, you can upgrade to standard membership for $30 per month, and it gives you unlimited personal use. So this is actually kind of nice too. So in terms of pricing, price per unit, I think Midjourney definitely takes a crown for this part. But overall, they're incredible tools, and if you combine them in an creative ways, I think you can create some really interesting works. Now, my prediction is that this will become a profession of its own. I find that depending on how you design the prompt, you get a dramatically different result. I see that some of the um, images generated by the other people on Midjourney are looking amazing, and if I try to do the same thing, for some reason, I don't get the similar effect. So. I feel like there is some skill involved, even though these tools are amazing. And yeah, I think there will be some professional users out there. This is only the beginning of using these AI collaboration tool. And we want to foster this development by creating this AI architecture competition, where we encourage students and professionals to try using architectural imagery with AI to advance our field forward. So that being said, if you guys create interesting architectural images with these tools or other tools out there, why not give it a shot and enter the competition for a chance to win $1,500 cash prize as well. So anyways, hope you guys found this interesting. Let me know what you guys think about these tools and if you think AI will take over the world or if you think our job is safe for next foreseeable future. Thanks for tuning in again and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!